What's going on guys? Foresight Capital here. Today we're going to talk about why Palantir closed over 7% down on the day and whether or not this officially ends the small bull run that we've seen since the middle of May. We're also going to take a look at a Seeking Alpha article that I've seen shared all over financial media which particularly calls out financial YouTubers for throwing out crazy market cap valuations like $1 trillion plus dollars for Palantir or $500 plus dollars per share. There's been a lot of exuberance behind the stock and I want to talk about whether it's realistic based on the other $4 trillion companies out there for Palantir to hit such a level. But first we're going to talk about today's pricing action and we saw Palantir close down over 7% on the day coming very close to end contact with our green support line at around 2260. We closed out today at 2289. So four of the past five days for Palantir have been red and it seems that we've yet, a been, yet again been rejected by the red resistance line of 2770. We faded for a couple of days down to 2460 where we had a bit of an indecision day on the 6th before ultimately gapping down below the support level and coming back to test the 50 period moving average which we actually closed a bit below and just above the support level of 2260. So overall there wasn't actually any news that came out today that would cause Palantir to be down 7%. Obviously there were just more sellers than buyers out there. But again, there are probably at this point a lot of retail traders starting to pick up that Palantir is consistently rejected by 2770 and potentially even 2460, which means that there was a lot of selling pressure going on and that ultimately caused Palantir to gap down. When we saw the morning gap down, as we saw most of the morning Palantir faded, we ultimately ended up getting a little bit more selling pressure, which resulted in a brief touch all the way down to a low of the day of 2272 before a slight rebound. So overall, it was not a day that a lot of us were expecting. In fact, we were expecting it to hold the 2460, especially with this indecision candle that we had on the 6th where we had an open at 2460 and a close at 2468, so above that support level, but we did get the gap down. So on Monday, I actually made a video saying that Palantir is potentially in a new bull run. We saw that after setting continuously lower highs and continuously lower lows, we ultimately had a big green candle on May 11th that caused this recent bull run all the way up to 2770, where we were yet again rejected. And I mentioned in that video that until we really have a catalyst behind Palantir, like a positive earnings report or a positive contract, we're probably going to see it continually rejected by this 2770 level. And it should trade somewhere in this between the red and the green support and resistance lines with a potential fall all the way back down to the $21 per share range. Now, if we do see a fall all the way back down to the 2115 range, that's where we have to start wondering whether or not the bull run is still intact. But as far as I'm concerned now, seeing consistently green candles rejected by a longer term resistance and then a slight gap back down, if this ends up being the bottom at around the $22 per share level and we start to see some more uptrend, we would be able to say that we've set a higher low. Even if we fall down to the $21 per share range and then have a rebound and start pushing back towards $27.70, hoping to maybe reach around that level right around the time of the Q2 earnings report, then we could say that the bull trend is still intact. Where we really have to start worrying about whether or not the bull trend is still intact and whether or not this was a fake out breakout and an even bigger push down, potentially all the way down to $14, is if we get a break of this $21 per share range. So if you're looking to buy and you think that the stock's going to make a turnaround, Really, $22.60 and $21 per share would be great points to add to your position if you're averaging down at those levels or even if you're looking to average up and have a longer or a bigger share holding. So that's really what I'm seeing here. The bull trend isn't broken. In fact, we needed to see a bit of a pullback after this multi-week run where we really rallied over 30%. Uh, or really over almost 50%. So a bit of a pullback was needed for Palantir, and I think that we're still really in the bull run. So I wanted to talk a little bit about this article. There have been a couple other YouTubers that have made videos on this particular article, and I've been seeing it shared all around Twitter and some other social media talking about Palantir, a stock with a $1 trillion problem. Basically, the article has a very negative view of Palantir, 
and in particular they talk about YouTubers talking about Palantir having a $1 trillion market cap by doing clickbaity quote-unquote in-depth analysis by financial fluencers on Palantir and that there's not a whole lot of substance behind the videos just a whole lot of hype talking about how Palantir has the potential to reach 500 plus dollars per share and using outdated metrics like multiples which I've actually been known to do on this channel however I don't tend to go towards the higher end of the multiple range like a lot of growth stocks are I tend to be pretty conservative with them and I've said time and time again that my personal uh, target for Palantir is right around $30 to $35 right now with a longer term goal being in the $80 to $100 plus dollar per share range about three to five years out. So definitely a good bit lower than the $500 plus dollars that you're seeing from some of the other YouTubers out there. However, I can agree with this article that a lot of the metrics being used to judge Palantir really don't apply to a company like Palantir. And that's where we run into the problem that Palantir doesn't have that many direct competitors, doesn't have that many companies that do the same business, and so there aren't that many competitors to have a multiples, uh, to basically compare multiples to. Uh, so the article then goes on to talk about how Palantir judges against some of the other trillion dollar stocks like Microsoft, Alphabet, and Amazon. So I wanted to kind of pull up some of the profit from both Palantir and some of the other trillion dollar companies. Now obviously Palantir has not turned in a truly profitable quarter yet. We have had a net operating profit, but after factoring in a lot of the stock-based compensation, Palantir is still having overall non-profitable quarters. If we take a look at some of the other trillion dollar companies out there, like Microsoft, we're able to see that they have net income of about $56 billion in a single quarter. Palantir has yet to even reach 1 20th of that total revenue amount in a single quarter, much less having that level of profitability. If we pull up a, another company that has a trillion dollar market cap, like Amazon, and then we pull up the income statement here, we'll be able to scroll down and see that they actually have a net income of about $26 billion. And of the $4 trillion companies that are out there, Amazon is actually the least profitable currently with still bringing in over $26 billion in a single quarter. So we've got Palantir that is growing at a 48% quarter over quarter rate and it's looking like it's going to continue to be able to do that in the long term, but we still only got $1.2 billion in revenue for the quarter. In order to reach that trillion dollar market cap, we should expect for Palantir to be bringing in at least roughly equivalent levels of profit, and we're just not seeing that yet. So I think that for Palantir to reach a $500 plus dollar per share range or trillion dollar plus valuation, we're really talking 20 plus years down the line. And that's actually what this article talks a lot about, is that a lot of the companies are very mature. Palantir is mature, but it's actually being judged a lot as a growth stock. However, Palantir has been around for about 17 years. Now, yes, they're actually just now starting to grow rapidly and didn't grow as rapidly in their infant years. But Amazon, Apple, these are all companies that are mature, but are still growing at a very high rate. And this, the, the valuations basically that we're giving Palantir are more like a company that's not quite mature and could have 200 or 300 plus revenue growth years. And we're just not seeing that with Palantir. We're seeing 40 to 50% growth, which is still insane, but it's just lending to the fact that Palantir probably is still, the, is still 15 to 20 years from being able to reach that trillion dollar market cap. And by that point, there will be a lot more companies to judge the multiples judge the earnings by and potentially even some more close competitors but currently Palantir at least in the long term in my opinion is a 100 to 150 dollar stock which is still great it's still 300 to 400 plus percent returns it's just not quite the level of reaching 500 plus dollars per share we'd basically have a, a, a multiple of almost 25 X from where we currently are and that just can't be justified with the level of revenue, the level of net income that we have. Now, there are a million ways that you can value a company. Obviously, if I knew exactly how to value a company perfectly, I would just be buying and selling Palantir. But it is a company I believe in the long term. I just think that it's one that's going to really have to grow into that trillion dollar valuation. 
I'm actually going to link this article. There are a lot of great points and a lot of comparisons that are drawn between Palantir and some of the other companies out there. Not only the trillion dollar market cap companies, but also similar growth stocks. So overall, the article ends up concluding that Palantir really needs to diversify some of its revenue and it really needs to grow exponentially from where it is to hit that trillion dollar market cap. So a lot of the YouTubers out there basically that are putting out the trillion dollar plus market cap are doing things uh, in, a, in a bit of a quick clickbaity way. I definitely think that we can reach that, but it's, it's a long way away. So I'd actually like to go and do a discounted cash flow on Palantir. It's not something that I've done on the channel in the past. I used to do it for my job and a little bit for school. And this is one particular breakdown that this article calls out as being able to properly value a company. So definitely leave a comment down below if you stuck around, if you want to see a discounted cash flow video on Palantir, or if you want to stick to just the technical side of things and leave some of the valuations to some of the other YouTubers. I really appreciate you watching until the end. Sorry this one ran over just a little bit, and we'll catch you in the next one.